This NFL Picks Week 8 edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. For boosted parlays, the in game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign today to receive a $1,000 risk free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WINNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Check out the new propswap.com and use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. We're also brought to you by Prediction Strike. Prediction Strike is the only performance based sports stock market where you can buy and sell shares of professional athletes. Use promo code SGP to receive a free athlete share with your first deposit of $20 or more. We're also brought to you by Freeze Pipe. Smoking cannabis doesn't have to hurt. Freeze pipe has a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more. Upgrade your game at thefreezepipe.com and use promo code SGP for 10% off. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. To the sports gambling podcast. I am Sean stacking that money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. Week eight, Sean. It's week uh, eight. It, Feeling it, great. It, historically, uh, we'd be talking about almost halfway through the season. Yep. Uh, not this year, though. Bonus football. So Thank we're not God. even not even close. Not extra even extra week. Extra bonus week. Bonus football. Last I, last game before the halfway poll, though. The la, I mean, yeah. I, I think we should, some of these teams, like the Cowboys and the Cardinals, might be for real. Sean. <laughs> I, we, it's it's almost a half. We should do a uh, we should do a bonus episode where we go back and look review. at some of our. I mean, we gave out so many uh, win totals, prop bets. It's interesting. I feel like my win total and some of my season long stuff doing much better than the actual week to week. Although M coming off a 50% lock performance, we'll see if we can keep it hot today. I uh, feel like I'm all dialed in. Was uh, getting a nice pump in before uh, the show. If you're wondering why my biceps uh, look uh, particularly strong, I did uh, bring my uh, Bowflex weights from home, brought them to the office, which you apparently Colby said you were making fun of me for enjoying lifting weights, Ryan. You know, I'm a I'm an alpha. I got a lot of testosterone to burn off watching the games. I'm going to lift a little weights. I'm glad you brought this up. I didn't want to violate your medical privacy by bringing up the uh, gym equipment you're bringing into the office. I just found it to be funny. It wasn't so much that you brought the weights in because I'm sure I'll find myself picking them up from time yeah, to time. When we're in hour nine of watching games, it's nice to have a little physical activity. Would have loved to have them here for the uh, for the 24 hour draft day. Oh. Would have been helpful to get some blood flowing. Uh, but it was, it's just, oh, it's never going to not be amusing to me to come into a place of work and see you throwing up some one arm shoulder press. Just never not going to be yeah. funny. So, yeah. It's kind of workplace. Sorry for we're making building. fun of you to Colby. No, it's all right. You know, Colby's <laughs> my eyes and ears in the uh, in the corporation. <laughs> I'll shout have to shout that, out to Colby. I'll have to keep that in mind next time he, Colby is he phones help at uh, 7 58 a.m. when he ha- can't figure buddy, it out. Buddy, buddy, I don't, uh, buddy, what's going on here? Don't I mean, know. <laughs> one day when we do the, the, uh, the SGPN come Oral up, history. Do- come up documentary. There's going to be a whole section of just Colby not being able to interface with technology, <laughs> like a whole chapter. The, in the, book. the irony is he's called the database, but he's he's clearly a legacy product. Doesn't doesn't interact with technology well. He's as we're recording this, he's <laughs> watching God's eye, and in God's eye, the pupil, which is uh, the center TV, uh, <laughs> USFL game from 1990. Uh, I, I, and Colby pointed out it's an old USFL game, as if I thought there was a new. USFL game uh, happening today on a Wednesday. We're here. We already spoke to him about standard def on God's <laughs> eye. I, he just he I don't know. The database hasn't upgraded in 20 years. Oh man, 
course, talking NFL and your home for betting the National Football League is of course win bet. Bet big, win bigger with win bet. That's right. Head over to winbet.com. Oh man, actually got to lay down some bets this past weekend at the beautiful win. The Blue Wire Studios hanging out with the crew over there. Our bonus episode from the uh, Blue Wire Studios at the win. You can check that out. Nate Collins, make sure you check that out. And Nate's a big fan of those long shot parlays. And who can blame him? Lay a couple bucks, win even more. And, uh, you know, win. They hook you up. Promos, bonuses, they got you covered. New users can bet $1. That's right, $1 and win $100 on any sport. Plus, your first mat, your first wager, win bet, has you covered with a match of 200% up to $1,500. Just head over to winnbet.com. Win bet if you want to win big. Right, got a full slate NFL action. Not as many uh, bye weeks this week. Some more opportunities to uh, get down on some games. Before we do that, though, we uh, again as we as we keep dialing in, uh, trying to figure out you know get the mojo completely right. Well, a couple of things. If anyone knows a sports psychologist, I'm trying to find one to come in and 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 do a little uh, analysis with us, but. Unrelated or possibly related, Ryan. Uh, random guy found our email, emailed us a, a an original song. Mm. That's right, an original song. We're not traditionally a music uh, show, but he emailed oh, us yeah. a song called "The Point Spread Song." Uh, in parentheses, cover the spread by Cassandra Irene Norman. It's available on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and all other streaming services. I really enjoyed this song for a number of reasons. One that just the fact that the song is dedicated to sports gambling and it's uh, very nice. <laughs> it seems uh yeah, the the topic doesn't seem to match like the vibe of the song. No, there's a lot of things that don't <laughs> seem to match in this song, but uh it's definitely worth a listen. Let's hear it. The point spread song. Play yeah. the song, Ryan. For the uh, tenth attempt to get off the Schneid. Let's go. Do we need a lighter? <laughs> oh Lord, please help me cover the spread. I bet my last time and I'm waiting with dread. Oh Lord, please help me cover the spread. I bet the money line on my parlay card. The odds are fine. I could see this being a late night song in college. Got the blue light on. Bring the girls over. Hey, you want to hear the point spread song? Oh Lord, please help me cover the spread. My bookie has chased me around the block. Bill collectors are calling me around the block. The, the, the choice of rhyming is very interesting. My eyes are red. Is the chat on fire right now? I assume. Yeah, we're we're broadcasting live on youtubecom sports gambling podcast. Song could be about sex. Did she write this as well? Give me a touchdown. <laughs> oh Lord, please help me. It's like she's almost trying to rhyme, but it's then clearly doesn't. The like she brings you right up to the point where you're gonna hit with a they rhyme, and then a and score a touchdown and cover the oh, she's spread. Getting feisty. They scored a touchdown and covered the spread. Ooh, okay. Oh Lord, thank you so much. My rent is paid. Oh Lord, I love you so much. We covered the point spread. Love you too. We covered the point spread. We covered the point spread. <laughs> oh, this is we the, like, the point You get the lighter spread. out, Ryan. All right, Ryan. I think the I think what we got to do, we got to challenge ourselves as as hosts, as showmen, as professional handicappers. If we do not, uh, now we're gonna do. Are we gonna do the double dog again? I assume. Uh, double double lock. Double lock. Yes. Uh, why not? Yeah, why okay. wouldn't we? So. Are we're we gonna, sure we're not supposed to have? Uh, you don't have like a written apology right now to the no. listeners about why? 
Okay, Here's the thing, Ryan. Right. We're gonna each do the double lock, and okay. if we need to get three out of the four locks, so a combine a team <laughs> three out of four. That means one of us two and zero, one of us one and one, or or next NFL picks podcast, we will cover the point spread song. They sent along a <laughs> lyric, so. We will we will cover the song if we do not hit three out of the four locks. So stay tuned. Long. Oh, <laughs> stay tuned for the locks. A lot on the line, Ryan. Not wow. only our money, right. but so, our pride. Ah, uh, you know, throw, bring in an acoustic guitar, roll a doobie. Yeah, get Jam a little. Uh, yeah, we got. We'll, I'll ask for the instrumental uh, track. I'm sure we can find that. And uh, we'll fire that up. All right, let's get to the NFL picks. We, of course, are brought to you by PropSwap.com. Use promo code SGP to double up. Perfect. Uh, if you're betting the World Series, looking to get in on the uh, championship action, get some series price there. I know, I know, uh, I'm sure there's some sweet Braves tickets out there trying to get unloaded. Just go to PropSwap.com where America goes to buy and sell real sports bets. Propswap.com, promo code SGP. Get that sweet deposit bonus up to five hundred dollars. Sean, let's can go. We, can we talk about football? Let's go. Thursday night football, maybe the Thursday night game of the year. Uh, certainly intriguing. Green Bay heads to Arizona, heads to the desert, where the Cardinals. Uh, I'm going to bring it up because it's relevant here. Opened as a three and a half point favorite on the look ahead. They're now six and a half. Uh, there's even in some far away places some sevens. Uh, we're picking this at six and a half. There's no way that line's moving just off of Devontae Adams because he ain't worth three points. You even you know that, Sean. Mm. Minus three hundred on the money line for the Cardinals. Green Bay plus two fifty. Uh, fifty is the total. I think this is an ultimate square spot. You have an undefeated team. You have a you have an undefeated team. That is now laying an inflated number, both because they're undefeated and because the other team's missing their best wide receiver. Which, as we know, Sean, is Devontae Adams worth maybe a point? May, maybe he's worth a point and a half. Yeah, crazy line movement off the Devontae Adams injury news from three and a half to six and so a half is pretty crazy. The public is doing the the inflation dance and and like I told you b- before we started recording I grabbed Packers plus 7 out of principle this mm. is Aaron Rodgers this is a veteran team uh, the coach uh, been in place the system I, I'm I'm going to do it again I keep going back to the fading of the Cardinals but in this case it's a short week it's Kingsbury and I can't ignore all the other data just because they haven't fucked it up this year yet well, and so it's when I see and and you know no Alan Lazard as well, and we'll get to that when we talk our little prop bets because the it took like an extra day, because uh, everyone had to adjust the prices with no Lazard, no Devonte Adams. Aaron Rodgers is actually six and zero oh without Devonte Adams, so kind of this and clearly Rodgers gets up for spots where he's motivated. However. This Arizona defense is legit, and that is one of the things I've been most wrong about coming into the season. That Arizona's defense is really good, and they're getting Chandler Jones back. Um, The Packers are still missing uh, key pieces in their secondary. I think it's going to be very easy for Kyler Murray to have a great game. Well, so you're rolling out the blowout Thursday night. Won't be a good game, dud. No, I I just think uh, you know, gun to my head, you're supposed to take the best team on Thursday night, and Arizona is the better team. It's pretty easy to make a case that Green Bay and the Packers are kind of fraudulent. Um, I mean, they got outgained yardage wise by the Washington Football Team at home. I certainly agree. The result last week was not totally indicative of the score. I mean, t- Heineke did his best <laughs> to to make that a, a strangely uh, blowout looking score. But it's still Aaron Rodgers, and Kingsbury is still the short week coach that is just capable of making horrible mistakes. Everything you say is is, is accurate, though. Like this is a real good team. This is a team I keep saying I sh- I need to stop fading. Yeah. When the line moves this much, Sean, I can't ignore it. I gotta take the dog. sound like Joe Q. Public, right? I gotta take the dog here. I'm going. Oh. I'm going Arizona minus six and a half. This I, is the super the sharp angle. I think they win the this game. This is the this is the 
uh, you know, reverse line movement. Mm. Now there's actually, I, I mean, again, obviously I would have liked it at three and a half, but I'm going to go Arizona minus six and a half. I, I understand the case to make for the Packers is pretty easy. That being said, I'm not going against the Cardinals. I regretted doing it when they played the Browns and I'm not doing it again. Give me the cards. It's a very sound handicap. I just can't ignore all this line movement. I'm taking the dog. I'm You're taking Aaron Rodgers. Guy. This gets the seven, probably right. Like if you if you're betting the Packers, you probably wait until tomorrow and see what's going well, on. Well, you right? apparently have these magical seven, so maybe the maybe win bet will move it to a seven. And uh, I I just imagine I if have a gets, magical seven in my pocket. If it gets the seven, is aren't they just going to get crushed with Packer action? That's probably why it's going to sit there. I, yeah, I would get. I would probably be seven minus one twenty. All right, but, what do you what do you got prop bets wise? All right, I mean. It, I think any I I looked to Kyler's uh, yardage total to start for the passing because it does seem like any way you slice it they're going to be moving the ball through the air. But what I what I ended up doing on the Cardinal side is I'm going to take the under on Zach Ertz 29 and a half receiving Ooh. yards. I I just think everyone saw him have that play with Sean as an Eagles fan. Yeah. How many times have, have you seen Zach Ertz run for 30 yards after the catch? There, it's an outlier situation. I'm going to under on his uh, three and a half receptions. And I think it's actually uh, pretty good juice on that side. I, I think three catches is the max for Zach Ertz just because I mean, they have so many weapons, the Cardinals and not a, even including them being able to, uh, you know, Kyler being able to scramble, then being able to throw to the running backs. And I think the outside receivers are really going to have a field day again. Why I like Arizona uh, against this green Bay secondary. And what do we know about our guy, Mike Leach? They don't even have a tight ends coach. No, they don't have a tight end position in the it's air. Not a, I mean, so I, Kingsbury clearly is trying to adapt a tight end, but it's still not natural. And I just love fa- the idea of fading Zach Ertz having that big play last week. So yeah, and we're on the same again, side. They, they, like. they traded for him for a reason, yeah. but still, I I think three and a half's a shade high. Uh, what else you got? I, I still like Aaron Rodgers to go to to sling the rock. I think he's going to have to against the secondary. So obviously, we're going to go Randall Cobb forty five and a half over. Um, feels like a easy play. Maybe it's super chalky, but the guy literally threw a tantrum. Pretended like he wasn't going to play football <laughs> this year. I'm going to host Ran- Jeopardy to get Randall Cobb back on the back on the squad. So this is the moment, right? You say, hey, he's missing his top three guys from before the season. Well, he's got no, Randall his Cobb. Top guys there, Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb's there. Maybe uh, his bottom guy. Bobby Tanyan, who is his bottom guy, he's there too. But Cobb to go over 45 and a half is going to seem silly at halftime. I'm going uh, Christian Kirk over three and a half catches. Again, I just think there's going to be a lot of opportunities on the outside, and I'm with you. I, I, even though I'm on the cards, I think uh, Bobby Tunyon has a big game. Thirty-seven and a half receiving yards to me is way too low. Give me the over on Bobby Tunyon receiving yards, and that ties to the DGens only bet. Again, even though I'm Arizona, on, I'm on Arizona. Robert Tunyon, a hundred receiving yards and a touchdown at twenty-two to one. That's fun. Is really really fun. It's a lot of yards for him, but I like that. No, he's he's done it before. Or even uh, him three touchdowns is uh, interesting mm. at sixty to one. I almost like that better. Yeah, uh, you know what? Maybe I'll just do that. So uh, I my third prop uh, again. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a dud, and someone's going to catch the ball. Aaron Jones over thirty eight and a half uh, receiving yards. Wow, that's gotten steamed up because that was at like thirty and a half. Really? And, yeah. And then as we heard the receiver news, it's it's shot up. I would imagine a lot of that news has has steamed up. And so uh, perhaps the best way to play it isn't to take his overall uh yardage prop. It's it's to take the longest one. And I cuz I think he could go over this in one play. We've seen him do that before. And so instead of taking the 38 and a half receiving yards, I'm going to take over 15 and a half yards longest reception. I, again, I think he hits a big one, so I'd much rather play that. To Sean's point, the uh, the, uh, the yardage has been steamed up uh, since the news of everyone being out. So uh, that's that's and that, that ties into my DJs as well, where I'm going to go Aaron Jones and Edmonds to go over 50 receiving yards. I, I'm shocked at this price. It's 14 to one. I I see both of these running backs being involved in the passing game. Uh, the Packers will will let you do that as well. So, uh, not sixty to one, 
don't have the big balls like Sean. But Onions. But fourteen to one for something that feels like a couple like you know minus minus one fifty minus two hundred propositions. Okay. Let's yeah. go. First touchdown. First touchdowns. I'm going uh, Bobby Tunyon at fourteen to one. AJ Dillon eighteen to one. He's interesting. Uh, Chase Edmonds fourteen to one. Now I know Connor's gotten most of the stuff, but he he's getting more and more opportunities. So I think there's a chance he could break one. And then Kyler at ten to one, I, I think is fun as well. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna go uh, same as always. Give me four of them. First uh, for the Packers, Rodgers obviously twenty eight to one. Tanyan fourteen to one. Kyler ten to one for the Cardinals. And I I just I took a stab at the guy. Uh, so basically, after Hopkins and a little bit AJ Green, like it's pretty nor the distribution around the red zone is pretty even. So I took uh, Rondell Moore twenty two to one. Oh okay. Um, just take a stab at the guy that's priced the lowest. I I, I at first I was like, should I go tight end on the Cardinals? And I realized that Kingsbury is going to Kingsbury on Thursday night, Sean. All right, Sunday ten a.m. here on the West Coast. The Miami Dolphins, Tua not feeling like he's wanted. <laughs> get the what music, a hilarious get, get the music queued up, please, for the. Uh, who knew we were going to be able to use the shit out of our uh, our soap opera parody of the NBA for the NFL. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our league. Tua realizing he, he's hearing the whispers. His ears are burning. Is he really going to get dumped for that rascal Deshaun Watson? <laughs> Find out on the next days of our league. Now, apparently the trade is in place for Deshaun Watson to the dolphins. Deshaun Watson is actually the one holding it up because he is uh, refusing to settle these civil allegations. So apparently according Does to it sources, make you believe he's innocent. You know, I have no idea. I'm not a. <laughs> You're not a lawyer. I'm not on the jury. I'm. You know, I let the uh, the court of law handle oh. this. These allegations, Ryan. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean, still holding out hope he comes to the Eagles, huh? No, uh, <laughs> not really. Because then it's just gonna the entire season is just gonna be about Sean Watson Horrible. and the allegations. The no season has been it. painful enough without having to deal with that. Now we're you know having to listen to Sirianni talk about fertilizing metaphors and growing plants, uh, so no, I don't need to add the Deshaun Watson headache. All right, well uh, the Tua uh, sad sad Tua and the Miami Dolphins head to Buffalo coming off the bye, Bills thirteen point favorites minus eight hundred on the money line, plus five fifty for the Dolphins in a single game forty nine and a half is the total. Defensive backs uh, still banged up for the Dolphins. This Bills team, I mean, com teams coming off by 0 and 4 ATS. Just throwing that out there, there to start. Maybe the bye week isn't great. Maybe the wife, the kids, they're, you know, things aren't quite <laughs> normal yet. It's it's maybe better to be out on the road. Uh, strangely, teams, uh, as I've pointed out before, not to crowbar it in here now, but uh, teams on the second of a back to back, Sean, 18 and 7 ATS, 16 and 9. That is up. crazy. So uh, pair that with teams off a of bye, 0 and 4. Uh, maybe it's not so great to be at home. Uh, all of that being said, this number is short of 14. The Bills are going to step, we've seen it before. They've blown this team out once. That was in Miami. Unless Tua has like a total, like, come off the, the mat moment. He put up numbers, so people are going to be like, "Oh, he had a great, he had a great week last Couple week." Red zone, yeah, but, but the red zone but interceptions if you, if you look watch, so bad. Yeah, the bad, the highs, the highs are are okay, but the lows are so low uh, that I, I just think the Bills and the way they play, the variance in this game, it's hard to look to the dog here. I assume you're you're laying the points as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a divisional trend game. wise division game. A uh, revenge spot for the Dolphins who got blown out. You would think take the points, but man, I I can't go against this Bills team, especially the Bills. Like they came off that loss against the Titans. Like they are just itching to set the record straight. And, and I think the Bills are a really good team, uh, even though they have two losses. I still think they're a great team, and you know their defense. They're they're actually number one in defensive DVOA. 
I think they're really going to be able to control the the Dolphins, and I think they're going to be into his head. I, I I just don't see the Dolphins really putting up much of a fight, and the fact that you know two is having to answer these trade questions, having to answer all this stuff, they just don't seem like they're on the same page. And Brian Flores clearly isn't the coach that I thought he was. A really, really just some bad spots. And then that Falcons game, that's got to kill your confidence as a team. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, they covered, which that was cool. They got the, they covered the two and a half. I, I guess the only angle I can see for the Dolphins, other than the things you pointed out, is like maybe this also is a get healthy game. Like they, they have been really injured. They are getting healthier, but they're still banged up. And there's still a lot of guys with limited practices, even though that's better than no practice last week. So I, I I'm and, with and you. Seth I, Diggs is, uh, you know, had a nice game against the Titans. I, I feel like that was good. Cause he was kind of having a, at least by Steph Diggs year, kind of slow start. So I think that's huge for them. I just like, I want to say like, well, if the, if the defensive backs for, for the, for the dolphins can get healthy, but, but let's not, wasn't Howard requesting a trade before the season. Like, could he be maybe revisiting that, that request with, with the front office right now? Uh, I, I think this locker room is probably in trouble. Uh, not even the short yardage specialist himself, Jacoby Percet, can fix it. I don't think the secondary is going to be back to full strength, and I think Diggs could maybe have his signature kind of fantasy moment this weekend. I just threw in a Josh Allen, uh, Diggs, yeah, I mean, Sweeney stack. I, I mean, if this score was thirty-five twenty-one, would you be shocked? No, and it's. Uh, I guess I'd be shocked if Miami made this a game, especially in the second half. I guess what concerns me is. It's it's a big number and it's a divisional game, but Buffalo can cover spreads and I, and I'm not too worried about that. So give me Buffalo uh, laying the 13 with you, Sean. All right, next up, Carolina heads to Atlanta. A little NFC South action. Atlanta one and a half on the look ahead, all the way up to three for what? Because Carolina got their ass kicked against my New York Football Giants. They received mm. the message. I picked against them. They put in some work. Carolina is now a close your eyes special. Can you believe that, Sean? Really? The Giants produced the close your eyes <laughs> special. Wow, um, Carolina. Obviously, that it, that is the kind of moment where you're going to find out a lot about the franchise. There, Atlanta is now minus three, minus one sixty five on the money line. Panthers plus one forty five, forty six and a half is the total. Carolina's on a back to back road spot, so we like that trend. Mm. Carolina's a close your eyes special. We like that trend. Uh, unfortunately, after starting three and zero against the spread and straight up, they've been zero and four in both categories since. But they're still eight and two over their last ten road games against the spread. They're still six and one against the spread over their last seven as a road underdog. And this is still the Atlanta Falcons, who suck. They're not good. They can't stop anyone. We saw Tua look great. Tua put up numbers <laughs> against this team. Pitts is fun. Ridley is fun. Matt Ryan, I think you can still get after him. And we we saw this Carolina yeah, defense and, and team Carolina feisty. can can get a little bit of a pass rush, and they can play a little bit of the defense. It's crazy that the Falcons are three and three, and and they and that includes a really bad loss to the Eagles week one. Um, they're 31st Falcons in overall DVOA. I am a little worried about uh Cordero Patterson. I think he could have a massive game. I think he is the guy to put in your uh we we didn't get to him and I didn't include him in the DFS lineup I gave out Such on the Chico. podcast, but he is just he has just been uh mispriced in DFS. I, I picked him up in my family season long league and it's oh. just been amazing. Uh Stefan Gilmore looks like he's coming back for the uh, Panthers. He made a promising step towards playing Ridley. He continues to get a ton of targets, but not kind of having that super breakout smash year uh, that we all thought this could be a decent game for him. Uh, that aside though, I, I think again, the, the, the obvious I think we're still in on Matt Rule as a coach, which means we're in on uh, the, the idea Falcons of him. lost at home to the Eagles and the Redskins in, in like really bad fashion. And they very close to losing to the Giants. Yes. Um, 
They almost lost to the Giants on the road. Uh, but but I think if you still believe Matt Rule is a decent coach, although he's doing the same thing he did last year, which is hot start, uh, slow Cooled finish. Off, yeah, it reminds me of someone in college, Justin Fuente, still not fired. Just I'm I'm told November 10th is the is the day. Um, yeah, I, I think you got to take Carolina for all those reasons. Um, and you know, I said it last week, and you kind of scoffed at me, but like, really, care? Atlanta's favored by this many points well, over anyone. Come on, that was. I mean, they won by two, Ryan. Yeah. No, they well, shouldn't have been I laying mean, two and a half against Should have got anyone. the one and a half if you're really going to bet it. I'll, I'll go with you. I'm going to take Panthers plus three. <laughs> you don't have to bet this game. Just, just so everyone knows. I, one thing I wanted to point out before we lock this in is that Atlanta is uh, one, six and one in their last seven against Carolina. Yeah, they, they've they've. I don't know. Matt Ryan doesn't look great, but neither does Sam Darnold. And yeah. and uh, the offense has been going. If Carolina can slow him down, I think that's that's the obvious difference in this one. Next up, your Eagles. They head to Detroit. Uh, Philly, you know. They got stuff to work on. Uh, you were in the building. Uh, that trend came to an end. Eagles minus three and a half on the road here. That's wow. insane. Minus one eighty on the money line. Detroit plus one sixty. Forty seven and a half is the total. Uh, I haven't mentioned uh, much about money splits to this point, um, but boy, certainly seems like a spot where uh, the the chalky dog. The public dog that's going to have a little bit of fleas is going to got to be this Detroit team, right? Even though without they don't have any wins, or are, are just, people on Detroit? Uh, yes, that's hilarious. Yeah, sixty-one percent of the tickets. Wow. Um, Jesus. I, but I, I mean, the, to your point, this Eagles team is not showing like they're well coached. They just got completely outdone by a, uh, a raw, raw special teams guy out there in Las Vegas. I I think, you know, obviously you're, you're, it seems like you're, you're leaning further and further out on Sirianni. Uh, with, yeah. With why would I be I, coming I, moment? You know, I, why would I be in on him? He looked, and he's done a horrible job coaching the team. No one's in on Sirianni, including the team. Uh, as far I, as I'm oh, sorry. The last thing I was going to say is, I wonder if the sharps are are just playing that, and I wonder if, if they're not realizing how broken this team might be. Yeah, no, they're really <laughs> bad, and and on the neutral field, I would mean what? They're maybe like six or six and a half points better than the Lions. That's that's probably insane. And the Lions are scrappy. Jared Goff they could throw make for it some a yards. He really could, and you know Foster Moreau carved us up. Uh, I mean, so did Derek Carr. <laughs> Derek Carr completed ninety-one percent of his passes. <laughs> like that's fucking insane. Uh, the, that's not good. The defensive scheme is horrific. Um, the defensive line should be able to eat, but that's only if you know they decide to pressure the quarterback. It's it's goddamn <sighs> insane. I mean, Fletcher Cox said, I, "I you know what? I don't get paid to." Cover screen passes, and they had him like shadowing a running back on third and fifteen. Makes no goddamn sense. I mean, Detroit is obviously a very bad team, but I think you know maybe the Eagles win by three and Detroit covers. That's probably the best case scenario for the Eagles. I don't see them winning by more than three points. So back, back to back, give me the Lions plus three and a half. Eagles are on a back to back road spot, and, and you know worth pointing out because that's been a very strong two thirds trend, but. It's it's hard to get behind it in the case where you don't believe. Like, is there a version? Of, like, is, has the coach lost the team? Like, is that like certainly they're not buying in, right? Well, I mean that I think that Matt, like when you're on the second game of a, a two game road trip and the coach is feeding you bullshit and you're out on it. I you know I I've, I've seen the Eagles grown man step up and bounce back before, and if they do, w- winning by a touch, yeah, give me the lines. I like it. Sending another message. It might work. Tennessee heads to Indy. Big divisional spot here, Sean. Uh, when this opened, Tennessee was favored, and I said, that's not right. Since moved, Indy minus one, minus 115 on the money line. Tennessee minus 105. 51 is the total. Tennessee has had one, two massive wins in a row. Yeah. And now they have a big divisional game on the road in tennis or in Indy. A spot where they have not uh, performed well, three and seven against the spread in their last ten trips uh, to Indy. 
also just not good in general. Colts have kind of owned them long term with only Tennessee's covering only six times over the last twenty. Now, it means you're backing Carson Wentz as a favorite. Yep. It means you're fading the big dog. Yep. And it means that oh. you uh you think Tennessee probably gonna have a little bit of a letdown spot here. Uh, which as crazy as it sounds, they have the Rams on deck. You're not looking past the divisional game. I know that. But god damn, they're in a hell of a stretch right now. I don't know how they keep getting up for it. Vrabel, uh Vrabel's dick is legendary for many reasons. It gets up every week and it gets up real <laughs> good. I just this Colts team has turned it around, right? They were 0 3 when the Titans dropped them in week three, and yeah, since no, then I mean, they've turned it around. It's a revenge spot for the Colts. I mean, the case for uh the Colts is pretty easy. Like you said, letdown spot for Tennessee. Colts are at home. Um, you know, they're kind of figuring things out. They're getting healthier. Let down spot for Tennessee, like I just said, but you know, I'm not taking Carson Wentz as a favorite, and I'm not fading Derrick Henry. Oh, I mean, you know, he, they did a decent job on him last time, and he was still 28 carries for 113 yards. <laughs> so AJ good. Brown, I think, has really, I mean, that AJ Brown breakout year that people were, you know, ranking him number one in fantasy and all that stuff. And we finally got to see it a little bit last week, and I think they build on that. This team, this Tennessee team is really gelling. We've seen this before when Tennessee kind of gets hot and goes on some runs. Now they I just watched did. I watched that Colts game and that was just that was just a classic ugly win a la Carson Wentz late 2019 where you're like, yo, they're they're rallying the troops. They're oh look, he's running. He still doesn't have it. Carson Wentz as a favorite, no Fucking thank you. Give me the Tennessee Titans as an underdog. Tennessee plus one. Yeah, I I uh, I think these th- these are obviously two teams that are I don't want to say regressing in opposite directions and confuse people, but they're regressing in opposite directions. Or at least Tennessee is due for some negative regression. I have and no idea what you mean by how are they regressing in opposite directions? Well, if one team is below the mean and one team's above the mean, and they're both regressing towards the mean, they're but heading how is, in opposite directions. How is Tennessee directions. getting towards the mean? They just I'm saying they're pro- two I'm, I'm wins pro- I'm in projecting a row. that they're about to start regressing towards the mean. So. Indy is already yep. regressing towards the mean, but you're predicting Tennessee is it's, also it regressing. Is due the mean. some regression towards Woo, the mean. About weed. And, and they're an overvalued team right now. There's no way they can't be. Why is this? But not, they're still a dog, though. Why is this not Indy minus two and a half, minus three? This is a home, a divisional. Yeah, game. I, I mean, I'm fine. It, you know, two and a half minus one. You know, the 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 key numbers aren't really there. If this was Indy, you know, if this was Tennessee favored as a road favorite, maybe by two and a half or three, then yeah, I would, I would be on Indy. Uh, I just, you're, you're on the wrong side of this one. I think, I think Indy's going to give them a little bit of trouble and uh, Carson Wentz is playing well. You have to come to grips with it, Sean. No, he is. And I'm predicting he's going to regress back to shitty Carson Wentz. Not against this Tennessee defense. He won't. Uh, Tennessee's defense has gotten better. They weren't they were bad certainly, but they've gotten better, especially recently. They have improved. Yes, but they're still not. I mean, they're still bad. They're still bad. They can just keep the Colts off the field by running Derrick Henry a million times. <laughs> All right, Brian. Yes. I would not be buying shares of Carson Wentz right now over at prediction strike.com promo code S G P. Oh, prediction strike Our our crypto uh, slack. Everyone's, uh, you know, getting busting their nuts about uh the Shibo Inu coin, you know, similar rush you get here over at predictionstrike.com because you can buy shares of professional athletes as if they were stocks. It's a lot of fun. We got our own uh, prediction strike channel going in Slack. If you want to come talk strategy, talk shop with your fellow uh, sports stock brokers, prediction strike, it's a lot of fun. All you got to do is go to predictionstrike.com, get yourself set up with an account, use the promo code SGP. And then uh, you get a free athlete share. You get a free share of a professional athlete. All you got to do is deposit twenty dollars or more, and the the shares are pretty reasonably priced. They're like a dollar fifty cents, two dollars. So you can load up, and uh, you know, hopefully, you hit some uh, sweet booms over at PredictionStrike.com promo code SGP. 
Sean, can we uh, can we hop back to the Eagles for a second? Because I missed it a little while ago, and now that we uh, we have the chat with us, I figured we should a- answer this question. Uh, fuck Mary Kill. Yeah, and I'll put this on the same. Sirianni, Hurts, Howie, Howie uh, Roseman. Well, hmm, that's tough. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you got to. Uh, who do you have to kill there? Uh, I guess you got to kill Nick Sirianni. Howie brought you a Super Bowl, don't yeah, you? Marry I, guess, him? I guess you can marry Howie because he did get you the Super Bowl. It's going to be unhappy. You fuck Jalen Hurts and then you kill Nick Sirianni. He's done the least for me <laughs> uh, in this whole thing, you know. So, all right. Thought that'd be fun. It wasn't fun. You no. you seem sad about it. All right. The Rams head to Houston. Rams, another big favorite, minus 14 and a half, minus 1,000 on the money line. Texans plus 650. 48 is the total. Tyrod, could he be back this week, Sean? I feel like that does affect the handicap. Because Tyrod's a feisty dog. I don't know. Oh, yeah. This Davis Mills character, he's trash. Um, look, I Rams got the sink thrown at him last week. So that you could take one of two angles here. You could say, well, they they shouldn't be surprised this week. Lions are probably a better team than the Texans as well, but the Texans are at home and the Rams. Why, why wouldn't they be potentially sleeping? Uh, I don't know. Tennessee on deck. It's, it's hard to think that they won't be ready considering what happened last week. And McVay looked angry. Like he had a couple girlfriends in the stand <laughs> and he, and, and, and the team wasn't performing optimally. So m- much like the bills, it it's hard to want to look the Texans in the eyes right now and take them. I took them last week and it was just they they had no chance no to score points. Uh what's what's the word on Ty? I mean it sounds like Tyrod is like it's it's a legit coin flip. Yeah, they they he was practicing today, but then they still wouldn't announce, you know, we're taping this on a Wednesday. Still wouldn't announce whether it's Tyrod or not. They want to make sure they have that competitive advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want, you know, yeah, the Rams will be really uh, bent out of shape. Rams, maybe a look ahead to the Titans. I, although I, I don't know, are you really looking ahead to the Titans? I, I, it's a yeah. non-conference no, game. I don't think I, but I how, noted it. But how amped up can they get for this Texans game? Uh, but the angle is they didn't get up amped up last week, and they all, like they were in a they were in a strange game with the Lions, with they still won by nine points, even though like they had an onside kick and a fake pun or two fake punts or whatever the hell happened in the game. So I don't know. I, I just think McVeigh is going to like, I feel like he leaned into him a little bit and he said this week, we're going to have a blowout like this week. We're getting some backups sometime this week. The offense is going to be like the fantasy stars. Like maybe, maybe we got to look to the first half bet here. Yeah. So l- let's take a look at some of the uh, Texans home games. They won week one, 37, 31, uh, we 21 Jags. And we did suggest taking it in a survivor <laughs> pool. Yes. Uh, they lost to the Panthers 24 to nine. They lost to the Patriots 25, 22. Uh, then they got blown out by the Colts. That was on the road Texans. Uh, and so they're back to back road games uh, getting blown out by the Cardinals and the Colts, Ah, man. You know what? I, I'm I guess I go Texans here. Really? Yeah. It would be a buy. I mean, obviously it's a buy time, right? They're they're coming home after a couple ass kickings. They somehow didn't underperform the spread by twenty one last week because no. they're getting eighteen and a half. I'm gonna lay the points with the Rams again. All right. I I can't. I, I I'll, really. I'll take Houston. I'm gonna take Houston. And just hope that Ty God plays. You know, I was gonna take Houston, but I just with the way that the Rams got surprised last week, I just can't see that happening. Cooper Cup's a deadhead, fellow uh, Grateful Dead fan. He'll probably be at the. <laughs> he's uh, at the show Friday. He's gonna be at the show Friday at the Hollywood Bowl. We'll be hanging out in the parking lot. Maybe uh, maybe check out the balloons, and uh, <laughs> I think that could impact his performance come Sunday, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, t- two days after a, a night full of whippets. Have yeah. fun. Cincy heads to New York to take on the Jets. Jets, uh, they were catching four on the look ahead. Now they're catching ten and a half because Zach Wilson's out. Plus three ninety on the money line. Bengals minus four ninety. Forty two and a half is the total. 
Zach Wilson's not worth six and a half points over anyone. Uh, I don't care how bad Mike White. I don't care. Ma- Mike White must be bad because they traded for Joe Flacco. Uh, <laughs> why would the Jets trade for Joe Flacco? If you're the New York <laughs> Jets, why do you give up anything to get Joe Flacco? It makes no sense. They need that BDE in the locker room to help Zach grow. But he's going to be your third string quarterback, and it's not like uh, uh, Zach Wilson's out for the year. I don't. And you 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 brought maybe, in. Maybe you, they want him to be out for the year. You brought in White. Uh, I mean, I understand signing a guy like Joe Flacco off the street, but trading assets for no, him, even if it's a fifth round pick, what are you doing? This is how crazy NFL trades are. I feel like they got the similar package deal for Zach Ertz, a guy who actually helps you win, and then Joe Flacco. Are you kidding me? He can't even start this week. But uh, again, I, I think. This is a tough spot because everyone's going to be betting Cincinnati. Uh, Jets are a close your eyes special, Sean. Yeah. The the play here is the Jets because this is a classic, classic, Ryan. I mean, you got your schedule card there. I don't know why you didn't already call it out, but this is a sandwich spot of all sandwich spots for the Cincinnati Bengals. Huge win against the Ravens. They're the toast of the town in Cincinnati, getting drunk off uh, you know chili and spaghetti, and now. They head to the road in New York, and they have a they have a massive division game against the Cleveland Browns up next. This is a game you don't give a shit about, and this is how you cover double digit spreads as a dog I, if you're the New York Jets. I love how Sims since he claimed the idea of putting uh, chili on top of spaghetti. Fuck it's not it. it's not, it's not bad. Shout out to Skyline Chili. Here's the problem. One, I do have noted that the close your eyes special can sometimes be a tough. When the quarterback goes out like this, it, it does make it difficult because the line, the the line movement is is based more on that. Also, Cincy is on a back to back to back road spot. That's happened one time this mm. season. Indy did w- uh, cover in that spot against the Ravens. If you remember on Monday night, blew the game, but they yep. did cover the number. Um, it, so, it, I think. Again, like it's going to be a tough spot. In that case, they were catching seven, the Colts. In this case, the Bengals are laying 10 and a half. I think this is the. And if you look at the money split, Sean, like what, like if you had to guess, if you're not looking, what do you think the numbers are? It's got to be like 80% of the it's people. 95. <laughs> so. Oh but, but then again, like, are, should we even be factoring that in? Because yeah, the public that's just right. keeps dominating. The most bet sides keep dominating. Hit the X Files music, please. Like I said. Yeah. This is the ultimate free roll. This 2021 20, season, sucking everyone in. I'm not complaining. Public is dominating, but shout out to the public. But uh, us super sharp guys, Ryan, it's been uh, dodging minefields the entire season. Yeah, I guess. Uh, should this be the same as the Rams game, though? <laughs> like, there is that side of it. Are the Bengals and the Jets the same as the Rams and the Texans? Yeah, I, I think this is adequately priced. I just think this is a this is just such a sandwich spot for Cincinnati. Yeah. It seems so obvious. Let's 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 take the Jets. Steelers coming off the bye. They're heading to Cleveland. Big game. Cleveland coming off Thursday night football. Getting a little healthier. Sounds like Baker could play. Minus three and a half. I hope not. For the Browns. Minus one eighty five on the money line. Pittsburgh plus one sixty five. Forty two and a half is the total. I mean, without even talking about anything about the game, this is an a- AFC North game where you can get three and a half points with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You take it. Mm. Baker, the injury he's playing through, I, I can't imagine he's going to be effective if he plays. So, to your point, Case Keenum, probably the better option. Nick Chubb uh, is going to be back, sounds like. This is a good Cleveland team. This is a good Cleveland team that won in spite being really banged up last week. But this is the kind of game that Mike Tomlin, they might not win it, but they ain't lo- they ain't getting blown out. This is three and a half points. It's interesting too, because uh, you, you like the motivation factor you see, they, they asked someone made the mistake of asking Mike Tomlin about the USC job. And he's like, Oh, are you kidding me? I got the best job in professional sports. I'm head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you realize like, okay, that's why he's a good coach. He gets, I mean, look at Kramer. He's already excited. He's ready to run through a brick wall for Mike Tomlin. Uh, They also, it's a revenge spot from the playoffs last year. Yeah. 
Match Mike Tomlin got beat by fucking Stefanski. You don't think he's been remembering that it, all it, off season? It's really tough though to like. I mean, you look at these matchups. I mean, we <laughs> all saw Big Ben, Big ben. <laughs> throwing that, throwing that. I mean, Miles Garrett versus the Pittsburgh offensive line and Big Ben. That is a goddamn disaster. And Cleveland, who had some issues with their tackles. Uh, it sounds like Conklin will be back. It's that defense, and though. you're going to need that against T.J. Watt because he could, you know, <sighs> it, it, this is just the uh, Case Keenum against that pass rush. Yeah, I mean T.J. Watt versus Case Keenum Ooh. or Ooh. Miles Garrett versus Big Ben. What what side? Because you know one of them is going to have a strip sack for a touchdown, right? It does feel like we should be looking towards maybe taking a first score defensive touchdown. Yeah, we got to look that uh, up. Nick Chubb's going to be back. That's huge for the Browns and Pittsburgh. Really, their defense, even at home. I mean, remember Seattle? You, Seattle came into that game going, "Hey, we're going to pound the rock," and Pittsburgh still couldn't slow him down. I mean, DJ Watt did get that strip sack eventually on Geno, but it was too late for the cover. I don't know, man. It. I don't think Big Ben owns the state of Ohio like he once did. Well, again, teams coming off by have not covered yet. Uh, I'm gonna go. Here's the thing, though: if they trot out unhealthy Baker, I want no part of this. Uh, if Baker wants to play, Baker's playing. It's his house, Sean. Yeah. Does he have house privilege? It's it's his house. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm pulling up the the money splits too. Uh, yeah. I mean, two thirds of the money coming in on the Browns. So you All know right. the number makes sense at three and a I'll half. I'll go. Th- I'll go three and a half. I mean, we do this every time with these AFC North games. It ends up being a field goal. You have no idea how. Yeah, I I think the, this reven- is the revenge angle from the playoffs where they got seriously embarrassed. That's that's important. That happened. These are professionals. Like T.J. Watts, one of the baddest dudes on the planet. Najee ha- this could be a uh, Najee Harris game too. I, I I think the Pittsburgh offense maybe surprises people. Big Ben got his uh, fix of manual stimulation in the bye week <laughs> concluded, so now he's on the football. San Francisco heads to Chicago, where the Bears are catching four at home, plus one seventy on the money line, minus one ninety for the Niners. Thirty nine and a half is the total. Justin Fields has been absolutely horrible. But you cannot lay four points with Jimmy Garoppolo with this, this fucking insane. Kyle Shanahan team. This where he, is insane. He's throwing Jimmy G under the bus. He, he uh, I don't get why it. is why is no one criticizing Kyle Shanahan? Why am I the only brave? Why am I the only brave member of the media that is willing to criticize Kyle Shanahan? Sean, do you see how much motion he uses? He's so smart. I, I get it. He maybe he draws up some good plays, but his, his dad was smart. <laughs> His what, dad, what, what was the what was Gary the, Kubiak was smart. What was the 49ers win total? Ten and a half. Looks They've like, just been getting their ass kicked. Looks They've like, been getting their ass kicked. And one of those wins was a win against the hapless Eagles, which yeah. they probably should have lost that game. He's the apple that fell how, down. How they looked good at all? Oh, but they had injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no shit. Oh, welcome to the National Football League. Oh, you couldn't count on George Kittle? You mean that injury-prone tight end that I point out that in the preview series that he was it was a lock for all his unders because. Cool. He always gets hurt. Oh, oh wait, your your quarterback Jimmy G got injured. That's what that's your excuse. Well, what do you mean? You traded up to draft a guy number three overall because you knew Jimmy G wasn't the guy. So now you're complaining that you don't have the guy that you didn't even like. What world am I living in? It's okay to call Kyle Shanahan overrated. Seriously overrated. They, uh, I, I just to to back you up. I pulled up the notes from the preview. Bottom eleven in adjusted games lost every year since Lynch and Shanahan have taken over 2017. I mean, what about only missing? Washington has lost more games to injury during that span, and we know what's going on in their medical uh, situation. Uh, they've been. It, it, it's just they. Oh, here's the best part: they fired their strength and conditioning coach in 2019, <laughs> and things got worse after. Uh, again, like at some point you got to be accountable. And I know these young millennial types don't understand being accountable. They just want to restart the game and do it all over again. Jump out of the fucking flying bus all over again. Shout out to the, uh, the Twitch crowd out there. I'm making Fortnite jokes, Sean. See, I'm cool. Yeah. Cool. Dad. <laughs> 
Anyway, back to the game. Uh, you can't lay four with with Jimmy G. Why are they a road favorite? They're they're they, also they, they got beat by this cold steam at home in pouring down rain. This is supposed to be the ideal conditions uh, for your team. You're like gritty, grind it out. Oh, look at all this cool stuff we can do with ZY motion and use every <laughs> sort of every sort of running back. Uh, you we use a fullback because we're smarter than you. Are you? Two and four, smarter than everyone. You got your ass kicked on Sunday night football uh, by the Colts. That's so true. Everything you're saying is true. Justin Fields is so bad, dude. Nick Bosa is gonna be coming after Justin Fields. And you think he's gonna give him the Ohio State like uh friendly? I'm not gonna crush Jimmy you. G, seven turnovers, six touchdowns. Um <laughs> <laughs> Chicago's so bad on offense. Will uh, Nagy being out with the uh, with the oh, COVID? That, I think and is that positive. I, I think Nagy not being on the sideline that Feels is like a, a get up spot for this team <laughs> because yeah. when you have a shitty coach and you have the opportunity to not play for that coach and don't you want to if you're if you're on the Bears and you're going to be there for a couple of years don't you want to show hey yeah. hey we can do <laughs> this without Matt Nagy and we can make you look good yeah let's get rid of Matt Nagy yeah. Khalil Herbert, he's been a nice weapon. 18 for 100 against against the Tampa Bay Bucks, who were supposedly had like a great run defense, uh, and and he's looked pretty dynamic. I think the 49ers are going to struggle, and I think uh, Bill Lazor, the fact that Matt Nagy won't be there, uh, ruining you know, ruining the play calling, ruining the mojo. I think Lazor can draw up a decent enough game plan, and I think actually Justin Fields has a nice game. I know we've been down on him, rightly so. But I think I mean this so is So let me ask you this because oh, I this is who's where betting? this is where I've reached. I've reached uh, I agree with you. I I'm surprised to see the money closer to even split than I I would have guessed. 79% of the cash. Yeah. Oh, but the tickets it's okay, closer yeah. to 50-50. And so that that does tell me that bigger money's coming in on the Niners. Uh here's the thing. If this was the Dolphins and Tua same spot as the Bears here. If this is Dolphins and Tua for you, are you taking Tua in the four points? Hmm. I that, mean, he's reached that level for me. Now, maybe the Dolphins aren't quite as good, but like that's where I'm at. I don't know if I can bet on Justin Fields. I, yeah, I, that's fair. My brain is telling me everything should be on. Like this is a Bears pick. But I'm taking the Niners because I can, Justin Fields is not an NFL quarterback, Sean. Period. Yeah. Well, and and really to me, this is going to be huge. Uh, Akeem Hicks, defensive tackle, he's really the key to this Bears defense. Very questionable. When when he plays, it really makes a big difference. And and you know, part of the reason I I thought Bears would be able to give him a game last week and cover that big number was I thought Akeem Hicks would be playing. Uh, he's still dealing with the groin. He was limited participant, so I'm hoping he plays. Mac didn't practice. Mac didn't <clears throat> practice. He's a foot thing, but I I think he still played. Um, I gotta double check. Yeah, I, he's I, been playing through it. He's yeah, been getting. It's getting just kind of like a rest thing. He's a vet, but and I think they're doing the same thing with Hicks. But I think Hicks gets back this week. Again, another reason why I like the Bears. Uh, Jimmy G is a road favorite. What more do you need to say? Yeah, like I said, I agree everything you said. I just. Justin Fields is so bad, I can't take him. Give me the Niners. Yes. <laughs> Give me the Niners, Sean. Not Wait, you're going Niners? Uh, yeah, I told you. I can't. Uh, everything I said is for the, wow. the Bears pick, but Justin Fields is horrible. I was laughing uh, it, there for a second. Fade Colby in the YouTube chat says, "If Shanahan and Sirianni are hanging off a cliff, and you can only pick one up, who would you pick up?" Oh, for me? <sighs> yeah. Why do I have to pick anyone up? What am I doing that I need either of these guys? Well, well, I, ideally you're saving a man's life, right? Well, Shanahan, I, I would, I don't mind Shanahan as an offensive well, coordinator. I, I, Can't I, be a head yeah, coach. Though. I, I would pick up Shanahan again. I think he's overrated as a head coach, but I would say Nick Sirianni. You know, maybe people think I would. It's drastic or a stretch to say he deserves to die, but I'm not. I'm not throwing my hand out to Nick Sirianni. Not right now. Dog mentality is not enjoy falling off the cliff, dog. Is not say no for me, dog. Is not saving a dog. man, killing a grow man. Some, grow some, some flowers. Hmm. Fucking horticultural it's very, specialist. It's a very deep question. All right, do you want to move to the afternoon slate, Sean? One oh five. Well, right before we do that. Oh, talking yeah. about green thumbs. Oh man. Hashtag digits only. 
What Ooh. about the ultimate green thumb or maybe a green lung freeze pipe? Oh, that's right. I mean, I I've that's been in the slack. Boy. I've uh, I've chatted with you fellows. There's a lot of people who enjoy Woo, and smoke about weed. That's right. Bo with his uh, sound drop. Now we got to We got to hook up Bo with one of these uh, freeze pipes because he would love it. Ryan, you get that glycerin chamber that you freeze <laughs> for those smooth, creamy hits. Yeah. Uh, last uh, Thursday, we're doing a little Thursday night trees, pumping them out on uh, social. Man, the it is it really makes a difference if you're getting up there in age and uh, you know can't take those massive bong rips like you could as a younger uh, fella. You got to get yourself a freeze pipe. Smoking weed doesn't have to hurt. Just go to thefreezepipe.com. Use promo code SGP. Get ten percent off thefreezepipe.com. Promo code S G P. They got, uh, uh, you know, all different kinds of pieces from sixty bucks to over three hundred dollars. If you're a hardcore uh, smoker and want a really nice uh, piece, the the glass, um, yeah, the glass is really nice, really sharp. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the uh, Kramer has the bong right in front of him. So it's, it's a well-made bong. It's uh, you know, it's impressive. It, the the ladies will notice the size, and your yes. buddies will too. <laughs> Size matters when it comes to your bong, but really, these again, you're you're, you're get you know doing a little well, dabbling with the weed. And what's fun, if you want to get nerdy about it, is the smoke is traveling all this extra distance through this nice, cool chamber. I mean, it, it really like if you're if you want to make an analogy for the younger kids, uh, using ice cubes mm. in the old bong, that's like a VHS tape, right? <laughs> What are you doing? It's this, old school. This is uh this is a Hulu on your phone right here. All right. 105 on the West Coast, Jacksonville. The Jaguars coming off the bye week, coming off a win. London Jags. Uh long long trip. Uh Man, they, what a what a travel schedule. I mean, I realize there's a bye week between, but you go London back to Jacksonville yeah. up to Seattle. Literally, I don't think you can go much further. Uh Seattle coming off Monday night football, fun trend, Sean teams coming off Monday night football, nine and two against the spread eight and three straight up this year. Seahawks minus three and a half minus minus one seventy on the money line. Jags plus plus one fifty. 43 and a half is the total. This is a very, very tricky handicap for me because I, I'm not sure that you, you know, you start with uh Geno Smith laying yep. three and a half really. Okay. And, and you, where you move to is your that you're then like, oh shit, Jags coming off a win. Uh, there was a lot of celebrating, and that that was a week off. And <laughs> Urban Meyer, like, what? Oh, I'm doing? sure he was just. I'm sure he was just at home watching film. So uh, to me, the stronger of the two is I think we the Jags who uh, are who we thought they were. They're a horrible team. You get to fade a horrible team coming off a win. I love the Seattle Seahawks here. The number tells you to take the Seahawks if you're sharp. Uh, I, I just nothing. Uh, I, the Jag, like the if you want to start, if you want to lean into the coming off the buy is a bad thing. Like the Jags are definitely a, a squad that you could see not being totally uh, back up to speed. Yeah, coming out of the, the Seahawks, they, they still have Jamal Adams. They got DK but Metcalf. They they have some grown men on that team. The Seahawks are a bad team though, and that's like without <laughs> Russell really Wilson, you really see how much Russell Wilson matters for this team. Uh, so I don't know, man. Like it's hard to lay three and a half with Gino. Well, that and that's why they made it three and a half. They want to get some Jacksonville action because they need you think it. It's purely that. Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, this you know. If if this is minus three, is anyone taking Jacksonville? No, because they know they need yeah. to make it three and a half to keep you interested. Now, no, I mean you know he's got a whole full week to prepare. Uh, you know, Trevor Lawrence probably the better quarterback uh, right now. Certainly the better quarterback. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to Pete Carroll coming off a loss. <sighs> Pete Carroll, the better be coach. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, he's not been great, uh, the, but I I still think Urban Meyer. That bye week, I think, is going to hurt the Jags more than it's going to help. I want to, I want to eat that narrative, but I just, I, I can't let. Like, you watch that game uh, against the Saints. Like that was a strange game. The Saints should have kicked their ass. I have no idea how any of that worked. That yeah. one play to DK Metcalf kind of shifted the whole existence of the game. I strangely, I, I, I think if this is a shootout, that Jacksonville is 
probably in a better spot than Seattle. Like Seattle needs to win a low scoring, like grind it out game. You're, you're right. You know what? Actually, and I don't know if you lay three and a half points if that's the case. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I, take I'm, I'm Jacksonville. Going, I'm going Seattle minus three and a half. You almost had the me chicks there. Are, the chicks aren't as good looking in Jacksonville, so Urban will be focused this weekend. <laughs> Jaguars. This is a great reason to to take the Seahawks. Jaguars are 15 and 42 against the spread versus NFC opponents since 2007. This is this is just historical institutional <laughs> incompetence <laughs> that I'm betting against Ryan. Okay. One in doubt. Fade the historic incompetence. New England heads to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. Also coming off a bye. We mm. heard about it. Brandon Staley talking about how he's looking in the mirror. Got to get more efficient on first and second down. Because as we know, Sean, performing at a high level on third down will regress. And you will regress towards your first and second down performance. We know that from the football outsiders. Brandon Staley, smart guy. Laying six here, minus two fifty five on the money line. New England plus two fifteen. Forty nine is the total. You know, situationally, again, coming off the bye, maybe it's not a great thing, um, especially for an offense. Who knows? Maybe, maybe a little, little bit out of sync. But on the other side, I guess the angle is typically I'd say like, oh wow, they just uh, New England just scored a lot of points, blew out the Jets. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have done anything to the number here. Look ahead was also six, uh, so which is strange. So I guess the question becomes like, this is a, this is a lot of points to take with new England, but if this turns into a track meet, I don't see how they keep up, but we've seen teams run against the chargers, but they have to be hyper aware of it. Well, right? yeah. And, and the chargers are 32nd in run defense. So you, you pencil in uh, Damian Harris for a big game. And this is kind of like the perfect team for the Patriots to play. However, the chargers, and there was a bye oh, week yeah. in between there, but they got embarrassed by the Ravens. They got embarrassed by the Ravens. And you, I mean, remember last year when uh, new England came out and just got destroyed yeah. by the Rams, like new England struggled in non-conference road spots on the West coast. I could see them struggling again here. It's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of chowder heads making the trip. Well, and this, yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> the fan base probably 50, 50, but I think there's a certain revenge game aspect as well for Herbert. Didn't have a good game against the Pats last year. I think he's got, he's got two weeks to prepare for this Patriots defense and the secondary. I mean, that's how you beat the Patriots, right? You get to their secondary and I think they have the horses to do it. I, you know, I think Keenan Allen could have a big game. Mike Williams could have a big game. Maybe a Hunter Henry revenge game. I, I don't know. I, I I like the Chargers chances here at home. And to me, this is just an ultimate bounce back spot for the Chargers. I, I think maybe the Patriots run defense can slow them down a little bit, but they they'll just get Eckler going out of the backfield. And Justin Herbert is just a a really, really good quarterback. Yeah, you're but you're laying a big number against the, a team that's they're, they're, they're improving. Uh, like I said, I don't think they can win a shootout, but this is a big number. And I expect that we've seen like Staley's a smart guy, but I also think that Belichick's going to come, come to in this one and, and come prepared. And I think, yeah, we saw the best of him getting, you know, totally angry at the franchise known as the jets last week. But I do think that he's going to, he's going to look at the situation and be like, well, we'll we're just going to run it down your throat. And, and I, I don't know if the, we, have the Patriots against bad run run defense. They haven't been stopped. And so I don't know how you can lay six here. Again, the, the, this feels like a, just a number play for me here, Sean. But I, while I like the chargers at home, they, they don't, they shouldn't get any points for home field. They should not get any points and they're getting points mm. here. Cause they're not there. What, what is this on a neutral? Like, that, that this is implying are they getting two points for home field here? Maybe they aren't getting maybe they're viewing this as a neutral field and Chargers are six point better with, on a neutral field. See, I think and I think that's fair. Chargers, I think that to me this should be three and a half, four, four and a half. Uh, Washington got some CLV there for you, right? Washington heads to Denver where the Broncos coming off Thursday night football, banged up. Uh, not looking great uh, for this. For uh, start, great start, Sean. Great start. They're looking like finally oh, they're gonna yeah. make your playoff prediction <laughs> come true. Uh, they're now laying three against the football team. Minus one fifty five on the money line. Washington plus one thirty five. Forty four and a half is the total. Ron Rivera. This Washington team. They, as you mentioned earlier during the Green Bay preview, they are close. 
They were closer than the score indicated last yep. week. And now they're playing a team that is reeling, uh, especially defensively. I kind of like Washington walking into this spot. <laughs> Love it. Give me Denver. Like that I'm on the opposite side of uh, Ryan right and, now. And I think there's, a, I, I think we have to start wondering about uh, the Broncos coaching. I think when I watched the game last week, I don't know if Teddy Bridgewater should have been playing quarterback. And if you're telling me you don't trust the backup that much to put him out there on a short week like that, that's tough. And like, what's I I just think this defense has has lost a little bit too much. I think we're getting we're getting good line value though. It was the look ahead was four and a half, and Washington gets their ass. You know, they lose by fourteen points, and it moves down to three. That's crazy. I, and I know the Denver defense has struggled, but you still have to come up to elevation. This is a non conference road spot for the Broncos or for the Washington football team. And Washington is really bad. Taylor Heineke is really bad. They, they, this team figures out ways to lose games. And yeah, the Broncos were close last week against a good Cleveland team in Cleveland. Um, Von Miller is obviously a little banged up, might be missing some more guys on defense, but. I still think they have a decent home field advantage, and I I think they can get it done. They're, Jerry Judy looks like he's coming back. I, I just Washington is just really really bad. I mean, you know, if Aaron Rodgers was more interested in that game, I I think they could have done some damage. I I just think like you pointed out, like the 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 football team moved the ball around. They made some mistakes well, uh, around the red zone. I, yeah, and I think, but I just don't think there's any. They haven't shown me anything that they're not going to keep doing that. Yeah, like they they outgained a team and still lost by fourteen. I don't I don't take that as a sign of like oh they're really close. Means, it, I mean I don't mind taking them just from that fact, but I I also just don't really want to back Denver right now. I mean I I know you like the Butler, but the Butler's not healthy, and I don't think a, a uh, he's got he's got like ten days rest. Butler was pretty fucking banged up. I don't think ten days he, he's gonna be looking like ah, a spring chicken out there. He's fine. All right, next up. Tampa. I mean, I'm just, you can't take Washington on the road. It's Tampa heads to new Orleans, uh, Tampa minus four on the look at minus five. Now minus two thirty on the money line saints plus one ninety five. Fifty and a half and a half is the total. This is a lot of things. This is a Jameis revenge spot. Yep. This is a saints uh, team coming off Monday night football. I mentioned the trend earlier, mm. quite good coming off Monday night football. Uh, this is also a Saints team that has uh, don't don't look now, but remember, Sean, they did win the division last year, yeah. and they owned the Bucks. <laughs> this is th- there's so much going on here. Well, like you said, the Jameis revenge game, or is it a is it a Tampa Bay revenge game? Because they got their ass kicked the last two times they played the Saints in the regular season. Maybe they got their revenge in the playoffs. But what is it about New Orleans that they seem to kind of own Tampa Bay last year in the regular season? And they were certainly really close. I mean, if Jared Cook doesn't fumble in that playoff game, don't isn't there a chance they win that game? And and I think yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. This is crazy. This is too much. This is we're, this is a huge tax to pay for I mean, Levante David, it sounds like he's probably back. Gronk uh could be back as well. I mean, you know, we saw what Jared Goff did in a in a get up spot for the Lions against the Rams. Don't we, will, don't we have a similar thing? I, you know, certainly, Bruce Arians knows how to play Jameis, but don't you? I, I don't know, man. I, I, I like Jameis. the Saints. This is interview Jameis, <laughs> and I, I think what the, we the Saints got a little bit of mojo going. Oh, worst quarterbacks uh, have put up numbers against this Bucks team, so. A, you know, you call there's, there's still opportunity against that passing defense. And again, it, you know, certainly it's a, a bit of a long shot play like GPP tournament play the the Jameis stack, because it, it's not likely, but there is like, to me, at least a like 5%, 10% chance that they hit some of these deep shots. I mean, you saw it in Seattle, like he, in that second half, he had some deep shots that because of the wind, because of the rain, whatever, That's but the I, play. I think that was close. Now you put him in a dome. And you you give Alan Kamara, you know, Levante David might be back, but he's still coming off injury. Alvin Kamara, there are there are opportunities against this team. And I think I think New Orleans can take advantage of it. So I like New Orleans as a home dog here, catching five. I mean, when's the last time we've even had a situation like this? It's pretty remarkable. I mean, again, they they beat them, they beat them 38, 
to three at yeah. Tampa last year and 34, 23 at home. I, I just, at some point, Sometimes uh, you know a coach just has has a little bit for a franchise. This is crazy. I, I don't I don't really understand this one at all. And 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 you see the the money too. It's crazy. It's eighty eighty five percent coming in on the bucks. I I mean again, this is the year of the public, the year of uh, the square. DJ's, so yeah, Djen's only prop on this one. Jameis only. Jameis to go for three fifty and four touchdowns or whatever <laughs> it is. That's that's the play. That would be uh that would be super awesome if uh, Jameis Winston he's gonna have a game five touchdowns let's go let's go oh man Ryan we are just setting people up for a great weekend obviously you're gonna be watching a ton of football but Friday night Saturday night date night whew, you got to make sure you get the uh, family jewels all polished up and that's right I'm here to talk about the lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped. Oh man, uh, you've heard us talk about Manscaped before. I mean, Ken, 4,000 K LED spotlight, giving you that nice little uh, light, so you make sure you uh, help reduce nicks and cuts. Uh, lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard lengths with sizes one through four. So maybe you like to uh, you know do a fade on the sides, mohawk down the middle. Who says a guy can't have a landing strip? <laughs> <laughs> Manscaped, they're here. They're here to help you figure it out again. Do your, do your significant other, wife, gal, pal, whatever it is. Do, do them a favor. Throw them a bone. Go, uh, hey, honey, I know you'd take all this trouble getting dialed up. Guess what, sweetheart? I shaved my balls. It's all for you. And uh, again, looking to get some action. Everyone loves action. Manscaped.com helps you get that action happening. Wireless charging? Are you kidding me? Wow. Well, the future is now, Ryan. Manscaped 4.0, the lawnmower 4.0, blown away by the performance. It really is uh, highly recommended. I got the travel bag and everything. Manscaped.com 20 SGP is the promo code. Manscaped.com 20 SGP, 20% off and free shipping. Are you kidding me? Uh, manscaped.com only use the best when you're uh, going downtown there. Manscaped.com promo code 20 S G P L F G Ryan closing it out with some prime time action. Well, and, it, and it's, it's the ultimate Sophie's choice for uh, us as a is. brand Sunday night football. We have the Dallas Cowboys coming off a of buy on the road in the spaceship up in Minnesota. Vikings are a two point home dog plus one fifteen on the money line. Minus one thirty-five for the Cowboys. Fifty-five is the total. All right, a lot going on here. Kirk Cousins in prime time. Auto fade. Cowboys six and zero AT, ATS. Auto <laughs> fade. You like that? You like that? Something's got to give. Oh, do you? I mean, obviously, we're not taking the Cowboys, so we'll just we'll just start from that position. What if I do, Ryan? What if I sacrifice my pick for the team? Oh my god! And that I've I've been why like are, there is that side. Why is this less than three? What uh, do we think that this is going to be? <laughs> like well, I, I don't understand. There's uh, I understand why the number is going is not going to get the three. But it is still odd to me. Like people are running to bet Kirk Cousins in prime time, and I know he kind of Mike McCarthy eleven and two against the spread off a bye. Oh, it, isn't the public just going to load up on the Cowboys? Hey, they're coming off a bye. I got them on my fantasy team. Eight, they're looking good. Eighty-one percent of the tickets are on the Cowboys. Right? To, how how real do we think this Dak calf injury is? If it's real at all, is it is it being factored in at all? What did you learn from Hard Knocks? They lie about injuries down there in Dallas. Yeah. They hide stuff. So if there's a little bit, there's a pathway to mm. it being a lot. And again, we're not taking the Cowboys. I'll I'll be I'll take the unpopular uh, home dog, yeah. quarterbacked by Kirk Cousins, in one of the few spots where maybe just maybe he gets up in prime Kirk. time. So you're taking Minnesota plus two, Ryan. What if I do it? What if I? I think it's a Dalvin Cook game. I think he yeah. has a huge game. Considering taking the Cowboys, but I, I don't think I can do it. Here's what I here's what I will predict. Uh, you know, the cornerback for the Cowboys, Diggs, I think look out for him trying and now if the if the Vikings are smart, 
and they they do a little like you know out and up. We saw it in that little double move. We saw it in that New England game where one he had that pick six where he jumped the route, got the touchdown, but then he did it again and got burned for a touchdown. I think Justin Jefferson. I'm gonna say yeah, Justin Jefferson. Like he's been pretty much matchup proof. I think Justin Jefferson has himself a hell of a game. And I think I I think they can keep the Cowboys offense off the field with the stuff with the running game going with Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison. Other thing worth noting is I I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little more 12 personnel or bring in some extra tight ends. The Dallas Cowboys, they've really relied on that uh you know Parsons as this edge yep. rusher which he was drafted more as a regular linebacker but they've been kind of using him as a defensive end good. and he's been good at it I think they're going to bring some uh, tight ends in to help block and uh I, I think that could be the difference I think Kirk Cousins actually will have enough time to get the job done so give me Vikings plus two <sighs> yeah it's it it's a horrible spot to be in but you can't at some point, the Cowboys betters have to have to lose, right? <laughs> they haven't lost yet. Yeah. Giants Monday Night Football, big time spot. Joe Judge, Danny Dimes coming off a nice win. They're taking on the Chiefs, who Sean would be a close your eyes special if they were a dog, but they're laying ten points minus four forty on the money line, oh. plus three fifty for the Giants. Fifty two is the total. I mean, this is a perfect spot. Chiefs coming off an embarrassing <laughs> loss. Giants coming off of a win. Are you kidding me? Can we talk about the fact that there's no way Chiefs only beat NFC's teams? This is perfect. That is true. You you watch the hit that Mahomes took. Yeah. There's no way he's okay. Right. But also, we've seen guys in the NFL have a concussion one week and play the next week. And I think Patrick Mahomes is one of those guys. Yeah, I I just Danny Dimes is going to be able to do something <laughs> against this offense, right? No, the, the the Chiefs defense is comically bad. So, this is certainly not a lock because the number is so big. It's Monday night, you know, uh maybe they is is Barkley playing? No. Okay. Uh maybe Booker is though. Maybe Booker breaks something off or maybe Danny Dimes you know, has some read option that he takes for forty yard touchdown. They scored three points against the Titans defense last week, Sean. I know, and you, again, that to me, I, I think the Chiefs under actually already hit because uh, they've they've lost four games, which is kind of crazy. We haven't heard from our buddy Alex in Kansas City. Uh, no chirping going on. Mm. The defense he must is, be uh, not getting cured of the hangover. The defense is comically bad. However, if there is a get right Aww. game, it is against an NFC East opponent on Monday night mm-hmm. at home with extra time to prepare. That is just like the you're just you're preparing the perfect dish here for Andy Reid, and he's gonna eat. And he's a guy who's comfortable eating. He does like to eat. I mean, if you if you looked at the profile of this team, you'd say no way in hell can you lay ten points with the Chiefs. Yeah, um, uh, and I, I think picked actually, against the Giants last week, and it was a. It was I a, think actually there's going to be enough action on the Giants because I think people saw them get their ass kicked by. I mean, cra- I guess it's not a key number, but twelve and a half to ten, two two and a half points is decent movement. It's pretty impressive that the it all it moved from twelve and a half to ten. And I on. I think do you have the cash splits because I think they're I don't think they're gonna have trouble finding people backing the Giants. Like it's pretty easy to talk yourself into the Giants here. I, I don't think it's gonna be like a crazy split, but I think you're gonna see more money. I mean, right now it's sixty forty. I think you're gonna see. I think you're going to see something like that for the game. Uh, maybe this this turns out to be a game where you see more of the cash on the Giants. To your point, like I'm sure there's plenty of people taking ten if they see it because I I think again this Chiefs defense has been horrible. I I can't I I mean on top of the fact that obviously I'm going to take the points here. I I you can't lay twelve points with this this team. Well, Patrick only Mah- ten pa- or tw- ten points. Patrick Mahomes looked like he got. If you watch the highlight of the way his offensive line, clearly they've practiced this before. It's the hey, when Mahomes gets knocked the fuck out, we're gonna stand around him like we're we're like uh, you know Roman soldiers, and we're gonna make sure he can't collapse. Where were where were Danny Dimes, Lyman, when he got knocked out? Well, kind of makes you think. 
Yeah, I mean, Danny Dimes recovered quickly from that uh, that concussion. Makes you wonder about his baseline. All right, and of course, uh, Ravens and Raiders on by Sean. Ravens would have been a close your eye special this week. Oh, as well. yeah, Get, they really got their ass kicked. All right, let's do it. Time for the lock, dog, and tease. Gonna do a double lock here. Double lock salute. Okay. Are we focused? I'm dialed in. All right. Okay. I really like there's a couple games I really like here. Okay. I'm gonna talk through this for the audience. Yeah, let's do that. Enjoyment. That's good. I really do not want to sing that song. A lot of pressure. I I know man, Denver minus three. Let's go. Okay. Wow. I'm also gonna go Chicago plus four. I'm going back to my basics here. Like this, this San Francisco team shouldn't be laying. I know Justin Fields doesn't look good. I, I know everything about it. You, but you're diabolical, diabolical, and Justin Fields, you're diabolical. Or do I do I make Chicago a money line play, Ryan? I th- maybe that's the better way to play that. As crazy as it is, no, because I can see that being a field goal game. And then for my dog. I mean, Tennessee plus one. I like uh, Carolina. You know, I said you don't have to bet that game, but the Panthers beating this shitty Falcons team would not be surprising. New Orleans, uh, that's maybe getting a little too cute. Although I, I think they will be alive in that game. Pittsburgh. Oh, what if they play Baker and then and then Pittsburgh steals a big Ben, one more victory in Cleveland. I like that angle. Although they teams off the bye haven't been great. Carolina or Panthers or Steelers audience. What should I do? See if anyone throws out in the chat. I mean, yeah, I just, I, I don't want to influence your decision. I'm going to go Carolina Panthers plus one forty five on the money line. Let's go tease. Uh, this is a, uh, not a bad tease week, Tennessee plus seven. I do like, uh, you know, I pick some of these massive dogs here. Um, Arizona on uh, nah, they, they could uh, Minnesota plus eight. That is a night nice classic long teaser. Yeah. And Kansas City down to four. Let's fucking go. What do you got, Kramer? Uh I mean, you made some money with them last week. I, I'll start with the Patriots. I, again, the, wow. I think the number is too big. Uh Maybe I'm getting cute here, but I, I think this uh this Patriots team, they gotta do some work to get their ass back into the playoff hunt. And for my second one, I'll stay in the division. Give me the uh, Bills. I I think this Ooh, is video okay. game Buffalo, and you know, a, as a you know coach myself, uh, the the last thing that you need to hear is that a player has lost their confidence. Mm. You you said out loud at a press conference, you don't feel like you you're being. And they don't want here. me. Jesus, that, that is uh, that's tough. Uh, and as much as uh, as much as I don't like laying these uh, big favorites, who am I kidding? I like laying the big favorites sometimes. But uh, this is a spot where I'm just going to take Buffalo, not overthink it. For my dog, uh, you didn't do it. I will do it. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers plus the 165. That that just pops out to me very obvious uh, from the start. And uh, man, I really didn't. I thought about getting Green Bay on the card, but uh, I, I need to avoid this Arizona team. They, they're just fucking they're slicing good, me up left and right. Uh, and I didn't. I I feel uh, like a little raw. I, I thought about getting the Colts in there, but maybe you're right about Tennessee. All right, teaser. First leg. Uh, is it is it not weird that I'm feeling odd about this this Minnesota teaser? Because like. It's one of those games they're gonna win or they're gonna get their ass blown out. Probably. And and I'm I'm gonna leave it off, even though it it, it screams Wong. You gotta play the Wong. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it off. Uh, first leg of the teaser. We're gonna take Jacksonville to nine and a half. I don't know how <laughs> I don't know how Geno Smith and that offense can Fair. beat anyone by ten points. Uh, for the second leg of the teaser. Mm. I, I, again, I don't think this is super smart, but again, go, let's take Detroit to, to nine and a half. I'm not, I'm missing the key number of three here, but I, the garbage man, he'll close, he'll close it. Uh, if they, if they are losing, that's just a lot of points for this Eagles team. And the last leg of the teaser, uh, the Washington football team scares me, 
but put put them in the tees. I, I don't. <laughs> there's not enough. It's an ugly tease, Ryan. We're catching my te- t- Tell the audience what my teaser record is, Sean. Very say, good. Say say it. Seventy one percent up seven units. What's my teaser record? Oh, 57%. 57% up 4.2 units. I it, we are tease gods this year. Yes. Holding on to those teases. All right. So for the circa, we got New England, Buffalo. Oh, God, we're Justin Fields is gonna be on Denver, the Denver, Chicago. <laughs> and Jimmy G is a road favorite, Ryan. And what what is the oh. consensus? I will do Pittsburgh oh. plus three and a half. Yeah. Okay. Let's fucking go. All right. I pray for your Chicago pick. That'll do it for the podcast. Make sure you guys uh, drop us a nice uh, rating and review on the old Apple Podcast for your chance to win free gear every Monday, aka hashtag Merch Monday. Obviously, subscribe to the Sports Gambling Podcast if you haven't already. Check us out on YouTube, on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stack in the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Good night, Sean. Great. Let it ride.